inclusion and to enhance democratic governance and accountability. And I think this is really what this project was looking after, looking at how the civil society can really empower the population to take the future, uh, uh, to, to more actively participate in the, in, in, the, in, in the work for the future. And in particular, in defining the government policies and interacting uh, more frequently and improving the dialogue with the government and local authorities. This project, we have seen some in, impressive numbers about the number of CSOs uh, that increase their knowledge. But what I would like to say is to uh, come back on the, on the work on the say of Josephine. It is just the beginning of a journey. We have seen that participation is something that is developing progressively in Rwanda. Locally, we can see that there is more and more uh, it is seen as more and more important if we want to really achieve the very ambitious objectives of transformation of agriculture in Rwanda. And, and indeed, <clears throat> um, this participation is a cornerstone for achieving this transformation objective of the PSTF 4 And <clears throat> So here we have established a basis. Why a basis? Because we have established networks of organizations in districts that can engage efficiently. But now we need to go to the next step. And the next step is what is really having these networks now actively engaging on the long term and sustainably with very concrete evidence, like James said, and very concrete, I mean, very concrete proposals for decision makers. We should not step say stop at saying there is an efficiency in, in delivery of seeds or fertilizers. This will not leave anything. If you become if you come with a problem, you become the problem. So come with solutions, not problems. And to come with solutions, just look at the very local situation, what is exactly happening and what solution can be can can be can be implemented very concretely. So if you come, with, let's say you come with a problem, you have a problem because you don't have access to the rice that you are selling. So just say, okay, I need this amount of rice for my family at this period of time, and this is how I would like this to be included in my, in, in my, in my, in my diet. And so for this, we propose to have this and this solution with vouchers working with the cooperatives, etc. So if you don't come with these very concrete solutions, then the local authorities very, very quickly will have fatigue to hear problems and problems. So please be very careful on that, because this is the future of participation that is very important for the country and for the development of agriculture. So, and this is extremely important for Rwanda, because agriculture is still representing 30% of the total GDP, and more than 96% of rural households are directly reliant on, on agriculture as the main and only source of income. Or only source. So, <clears throat> we can also come back on, the, the, on, on a few things that has been success, successes during the program, and I would like to testify on that. So, the one, one, one success that I've really witnessed is the when in 2016 uh, Minikovni came with a, a proposal for the for the budget that was 30 percent lower than before, and there has been an active campaign in, involving the, the the media, and uh, with all your collaboration that you had with the media, and talking closely with the MPs, members of the parliament, to try to see what can be done, and finally the parliament came back with a proposal to Minikovni to raise back. Uh, to increase the proposals of mean ECOFIN by 30% for agriculture. So it means that th partly thanks to this project, uh, we have been able really to, uh, to have a better and more, and, and, uh, and more sustainable budget for the, for, for the sector. And this is really a great achievement. And I think uh, it also showed that how, if you engage at the right level with the right people, you can really make a change. It is just not worth. You can do it also. You can make a change. 
Then there was also, like you mentioned, a very successful participation in the PSTF4 elaboration with some um, uh, very interesting uh, consultative uh, processes that was established and proved that stakeholders' involvement yield very much in, in terms of ownership of policies, then contributing in, in effective implementation, thoughts, ideas and wishes of the stakeholders are integrated in the policies and strategies. And I'm very pleased to say that we are going to launch this PSCA4 uh, translation for in Kenya Rwanda today, as it is really a very important outcome or so for all the sector. So finally, let me conclude by saying that the PSTF4 has a very important little sentence <laughs> that is the establishment on a farmer forum. 3% of the costing of the PSTF4 will be devoted to supporting, supporting strengthening and or revitalizing farmers forum. Hence, new projects implemented by Baraga and Trucker and other partners who need to build and sustain what achieved so far what has been achieved so far, and bring farmers in the center of agricultural policy and budget processes. So, concluding with this, I would like really to thank you again for all that has been done, and encourage you all to really continue this journey, this journey in which you have a number of partners that are engaged and continue to be engaged. Uh, we can quote Transparency International, of course, actually we continue with Trucker, that is here, we can quote also um, a CCOAB that is very much involved, um, a Twize Amway, uh, we can quote also uh, the farmer organizations like Imbaraga, Ingabo, uh, even some farmer unions, a number of cooperatives, etc. So you have, you have many, many stakeholders here that are actively involved, and you can go forward in this journey together, and this will be the path to success. And thank you very much again for all what you did, and for, the, uh, for this closing ceremony and the support you gave me to give you these few words. Thank you very much.